Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.1 released earlier this week and iOS 17.2 beta one released a couple days ago. I thought we'd talk about some more new features that have been found since the iOS 17.2 beta one is out, what's new video, as well as the overall experience of both iOS 17.1 and 17.2 so far. Not just based on my experience, but based on your experience with the YouTube community poll, where there's an incredible 22,000 votes at the time of this video and two 216 comments. I've read all of them to see what the overall experience is like on both iOS 17.1 and 17.2. Now let's jump right into some of the new features. And the first thing has to do with 17.2. If we scroll down here and if we go into the news app here in our settings, you'll see, we now have an option for live activities. We haven't really seen any live activities yet, but the option is actually here. Additionally, there's a new setting in privacy. So if we go under privacy, then we go to privacy and security, go down to the bottom and then go to analytics and improvements under analytics and improvements. If we scroll down and down at the bottom, we have improve AR location accuracy. That's augmented reality that could be used for the iPhone and also Apple vision pro in the future. Now, if you're using AirPods and you have it enabled, so it announces messages as they're coming in and your phone is locked. If you have those AirPods connected and someone actually sends you a message where it's got an image or a picture, it will actually describe the image or picture. Now I've seen this online from a few different people and seems to actually be active and working. If we go over to the TV app and then we go into the store within the store, they've actually removed the separate options for TV and movies. If we look at iOS 17.1 at the top, we actually have separate tabs for movies and TV shows where they've actually removed that in 17.2. Back under settings, and if we go to notifications, scroll to the bottom, go all the way to the bottom, you'll see we have different alerts. If we go into emergency alerts, there's a new option for local awareness. It says Apple can use your approximate location to improve the timeliness, accuracy, and reliability of emergency alerts. So this is something when you get specific alerts that may be out of range and don't make sense, this could actually help make it more local to you. And if we go in and edit a Memoji slide all the way over, we have a new section for body so we can custom that in iOS 17.2. So we have some new options there as well, shoulders, arms, and more. If we go into our settings, tap our name at the top. And if we go into iCloud and this one is actually pretty small, but if we go to show all, you'll see where it says messages in iCloud. This used to just say messages. So they've modified this for some reason and they've changed the wording of it. The journal app was added with iOS 17.2. And if we go into settings and go down to our options for journal, you'll see, we actually have an option here to lock the journal. We should see this brought to more apps in the future. I hope where we can actually lock the overall journal app so we can't get into it without a passcode. So if we go into it now, it's actually locked. And one thing they've changed as well is they've brought this to a check mark instead of a smiley face if it's locked. So if I close out of this, go back into journal, you'll see it's actually a little check mark there. So you may see that change throughout the OS there. Now, as far as anything else, well, there's one thing to mention with iOS 17.1 I didn't cover, and that's if you're using background sounds in the control center, go into it, maybe we'll enable one here, just turn it down and we'll turn this on. And when you go into the control center, it's now sort of a filled in icon where it wasn't before. So it's a pretty minor change, but something that's been updated. Additionally, in the code, there's some changes here as well. Let me turn that off in the code for iOS 17.2. It actually adds the code needed for Apple to update the device wirelessly in the box within the store. This is something Mark German talked about where Apple would be able to update it so that when you bring it out of the box for the first time, you don't have to go through an update process. It will just already be on the version that you want to use. So that's something that they've hopefully will bring very soon where we'll no longer have old versions on there. Also, some people have mentioned in this update, there's stronger haptic feedback. I haven't really noticed any difference, whether you're going into different apps, whether you go into maybe notes and if you're typing a message, hi, how are you today? I don't really feel any difference myself with the overall haptics, but some people have actually mentioned that. Also, one thing I wanted to mention with watchOS 10.2 that they've updated is watchOS 10.2 actually updates the activities workout. So if we go in and maybe start a, an activity or a workout here for an outdoor walk, give it a second to start. 
And once it starts, if we want to end it, we just swipe over and tap once. It's much faster to end, just like it was in watchOS 9 again. Now, Apple has an event coming up very soon, and that's in just a couple days. You'll see the Apple event on 1030. I did a separate video about this where we expect Macs, maybe some updated AirPods, and devices such as the Magic Mouse. The Magic Mouse really needs USB-C, which is what it supposedly will get, and hopefully they relocate the overall charge port somewhere else so it's more usable even while it's plugged in. Maybe they'll redesign it. We don't know, but it seems we're going to get updated accessories, not just the mouse, but maybe keyboard as well. But we'll get some new Macs and more. Of course, I'll cover that, but this is an evening event, which we really haven't seen in a very long time. So 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and this will be available to watch on apple.com or YouTube and maybe some other places as well. You can watch it on the TV app. You can watch it on Apple TV. So I'll be watching it live and hopefully maybe make a video about what's new or something else and try those things out that they announce. Now there is one other issue with charging that Apple actually acknowledged exists for BMW users. I think it's more than just BMW. I actually have an Audi and experience similar issues. When I wirelessly charge, the phone gets ridiculously hot. When I wirelessly charge on anything else, it doesn't get that hot. So it seems to be in certain charging scenarios where they could actually limit the speed Apple seems to have this issue on this phone. I experienced this in the past with other phones, my 14 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, I experienced that with. It definitely was an issue in the past for me, so I just stopped using the charger in the car. It was too hot in that particular car, but it's not in other cars that I have. So I tried it in my wife's car, and it doesn't get overly hot. So it seems to be with that, and Apple's acknowledged this and said they'll have a fix. So that brings me to maybe we'll have iOS 17.1.1 to fix those issues, and possibly, if we go into the camera, calendar here, wherever I've put that, possibly we could see that soon within the next week or so, but we should have betas with iOS 17.2 beta 2 either within a week or two. Typically they're bi-weekly at this point. And looking back at last year, we had iOS 16.2 Publix release in December 13th. So typically we have about a month of betas with November and then the first or second week of December, we'll have the final release to the public, and then we'll have one more beta, so 16.3 beta 1, and won't have typically anything until the following year. Or maybe we'll have a couple and then nothing for a little while. So that's what we can expect, 16.2 probably in December, maybe 17.1.1 in between to fix some issues. As far as the overall experience of iOS 17.1, while it's mostly good for most people, it's fixed a few additional issues that Apple didn't mention specifically, but one of those has to do with folder suggestions in the mail app. So that seems to be working properly for people. Again, it's also fixed an issue where sometimes you were on a phone call and people would not be able to hear you as the mic would stop working. This sometimes can happen when you're on the speaker phone or maybe connected to a car or something else that seems to be resolved in this update. Performance is generally good. Only a couple people mentioned they had lag and that was typically on older devices. So if you're using maybe an iPhone 10s, 10s max or something like that, it would sometimes lag for some people that's to be expected unfortunately as apple adds more features it seems to cause more issues on older phones however the majority of people say it's nice and fast whether that's pro motion scrolling through things in general most people say 17.1 is very smooth typically just opening apps sometimes it's a little bit of an issue most people also say it's super stable and also they said if you're using voiceover many of the features are working properly now much better than they did before so if you're using those accessibility features they're not a hundred percent but many people have said that it's much better in fact i had a blind user i'll read one of the comments later that actually said that it seems to be much better than before so that's great news however there are still some bugs with it that people have reported in fact the music play count doesn't seem to update properly in your playlists some have said there's poor battery life. Although we do need to give it a few more days to process everything. Once you do a major update, it takes a while for that to happen. But most say that it's the same or better than iOS 17.0.3. So for a lot of people, that's very positive. For other people, not so much. For me, it's been actually pretty good. And I actually figured out what was causing my Safari battery drain. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But overall, most issues are fixed. There's still a couple more, such as voicemail not showing properly. It didn't for me earlier today either. And sometimes FaceTime isn't working on T-Mobile. I've heard from a couple people that this is the issue, and I personally haven't experienced this. Specifically when you're on T-Mobile, sometimes just FaceTime video calls won't work altogether. They won't connect. Some people seem to be having issues. We don't know if it's area specific or not, but I haven't had that issue, but it seems quite a few have. 
Others have complained that air tags cannot be connected. So if you get a new one, some people are having a difficult time connecting them to their device. With watchOS 10.1, I wanted to mention a few things that are issues since a lot of people keep asking. Apple did fix the weather widget bug. So weather is showing properly. It's updating like you would expect. It's working like you would expect, but terrible battery life for certain people and freezes. Also very slow for charging. I personally haven't experienced that. I had great battery life on 10.1. So I know some people are having that issue. A couple people seem to be again on older devices such as a series seven but most people are saying that it's pretty good, but there are some issues here and there for sure. As far as iOS 17.2 beta one, well, it's an early beta, so we can expect some issues of course. And I don't think there's any camera improvements, whether that's the iPhone 14 or 15, basically all the photos look like you would expect. I don't expect any improvements to older devices with this, unless Apple calls out something specifically, but I've been pretty impressed with the cameras overall on the 15 pro max and 15 pro. And I think with the 14, they seem a little bit better now too, but let me know what you think in the comments below. As far as overall connectivity on 17.1, it was actually pretty good for me. iOS 17.2 beta one, I used it today extensively with Apple CarPlay and just used it in general, and it seemed to drop out quite a bit. It would just disconnect when playing music, it would stop. I would actually have to go into music, close out music, start it again, and then it would work again. So there's some odd bugs there again, even though they've updated the modem, there's still some issues and hopefully they get those worked out. But again, it's an early beta, so I'll give it a pass here. Now, also I heard from someone else that if you have an aesthetic setup, set up on your phone with maybe your own theme, custom icons and more, a lot of those are not showing the widget information properly. So the widgets just won't show information for some people and it's just completely gone. Even with reboots and things, it doesn't seem to fix it. Also the keyboard was disappearing for me in spotlight search. So if I go into search here, I've been having issues with that more so on iOS 17.1, but 17.2, I experienced it a couple times as well. Once today I went to search for something and the keyboard just wasn't there. I had to go into it a couple times for it to work. Also one other weird bug that's going on with iOS 17.2 is when you set a wallpaper, sometimes when you go from the lock screen back to the home screen, it goes to sort of a desaturated or dim version of the wallpaper. I've noticed this on my phone. I've heard this from a couple other people as well experiencing it. So it's definitely more of a widespread bug. And if you're having any of these bugs, be sure to report it in the feedback app. I'll do that along with the other bugs I've had as well. Now, as far as the release notes, we talked about that the other day. If we go in, these are public facing as well. Some good things as far as contact key verification, we finally have all of the features and everything is complete with iOS 17.2. We have all of the features promised to us with iOS 17 for the most part. Maybe the one thing I haven't seen yet is the arrow in messages where it will sort of bring you back to where you missed in a conversation with a lot of people, but that could be added later. So it seems to be finally complete in many different ways. Most everything is here and then we can move on to maybe some new features, but we did get contact key verification, which we should have had last December and we never received. So they finally implemented it with this particular version. Now, as far as overall performance and heat, well, the overall performance of this device seems to be good, like I mentioned before, and it's staying nice and cool throughout this whole video. It's mostly cool to the touch. Maybe it heated up a little bit just from me holding it. But if I show you side by side with maybe this phone running iOS 17.1, both iPhone 15 pro maxes, let's go ahead and take a look with the thermal camera with the thermal camera at the hottest point, I saw up to about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but it seems to be cooling down rapidly. That's probably just from me holding the phone. And if we look at the other one, that's not in use, it's down to about 84 degrees. If we switch over to Celsius, you'll see again on the one I wasn't using at about 30 degrees Celsius. And at the hottest point on the one I was using about 32.8 or 33 degrees Celsius. So staying pretty cool. And in fact, most people report that iOS 17.1 and 17.2 have fixed most of their overheating issues. So other than that, charging the device wirelessly in a car, it seems to be pretty nice and cool. Like you would expect it's going to warm up a little bit when processing intensive tasks or maybe wirelessly charging. Sometimes that's normal. It just shouldn't be too hot to touch. You should be able to pick it up and use it. As far as battery life, let's talk about that for a moment as I've actually been able to fix my battery life a little bit with that Safari bug. Someone actually suggested, one of my viewers suggested that if you go into settings 
and then you go to your name at the top, under iCloud, they suggested that the issue was from syncing Safari through iCloud. As soon as I turn this off, now that I've used it for a full day with that disabled, I've actually noticed some much better battery life. So if we go in here, now if we go to battery, battery health and charging, you'll see we're at 100% capacity. Here's my charging cycles on the left here from coconut battery. That gives you an idea of how many cycles, over 20 cycles at this point. Hopefully Apple implements that from the iPhone 15, where we have it in the about section of the phone to the old your phones. There's not really a reason they can't do that or even update the charging optimization to 80% limit on the older phones. I don't see a reason for the limitation. Hopefully they'll bring that in 17.2 later on, but either way, if we go back here, we'll take a look at the last 10 days. And if we take a look at yesterday, Safari is down to 3% of my usage. It's finally gone down. Now that iCloud has been turned off, it says nine minutes of usage, which is probably about right. And now it's only 3% music used the most as I was using it during CarPlay and a lot of notifications seem to be lighting up the screen, but you'll see it says usage was 10 hours and it's including lighting up the display over and over. So I think that's where I thought this was a discrepancy before, but you'll see today so far, 20 minutes of screen active time, zero minutes of screen idle time. Now, as far as iOS 17.1, since I'm on 17.2, let's take a look at someone else's. And this was sent in by Abishek on an iPhone 11 Pro Max running iOS 17.1 with 94% battery health. You'll see he had three hours and 19 minutes of screen on time, four hours and 58 minutes of screen off time and used about 75% of his battery. So not that great that day, but the day before he had six hours and 21 minutes of screen on time and 59 minutes of screen off time. So much better. I would expect about seven seven to eight hours on that phone. And I think that's what it's getting. So hopefully Apple improves battery in the future, but overall it seems okay, but it is a little bit better. I think than what we had before for most people, if you give it a few days. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.2 beta one or iOS 17.1, if you haven't installed that yet, I would definitely say install iOS 17.1 due to the security updates. And it seems to fix a lot of bugs for many people. It's much more stable for the majority of people. However, iOS 17.2 beta one has that nice new journal app and a few new features. If you really want to try out the journal app, you could install it, but I would probably wait until about beta three typically, or at least the public release or the public betas are out after a couple times, just because typically they seem to be a little unstable with a lot of bugs so far though, it's been good. But again, I've just had that keyboard bug and the few things I mentioned before, but I would probably hold off unless you have a backup or a secondary device. As far as the overall experience, let's see what you had to say. Destruct 24 said updated my 15 pro max to 17.1. And now I have an annoying bug that my home screen wallpaper and some other parts is causing a weird behavior where the color is changing from vibrant to washed ed boy one zero two one said, I had a very annoying bug on my 14 pro max ever since iOS 17.1, where my mic would randomly stop working on speaker phones or video calls version 17.0.1, 17.0.2 and 17.0.3 failed to resolve the issue was ready to pay Apple $105 for repairs until 17.1 released, which unbelievably fixed the problem I was having. GS 122809 said iOS 17.1 on iPhone 15 pro max for voiceover users. This fixes a good majority of issues found in the initial iOS 17 release at 78% at the end of a full day before going to bed. Now do keep in mind that I am a totally blind user and probably don't use it to its full potential. So far, this update is really good. J340 official said 17.1 fixed the image persistence issue on my 15 Pro Max on 17.0.3 and also fixes the overheating issue that was present on 17.0. As far as 17.2 beta one, this is from Goodson Jr. He says running iOS 17.2 beta one. And I must say that it's been running great so far. There has been no lag. Heating has reduced when wirelessly charging and battery life is decent on my iPhone 14 pro. And so that's everything with iOS 17.2 beta one and iOS 17.1, lots of new features and changes, a lot of bug fixes that we've been waiting for, for a very long time. And I'm sure there'll be even more before iOS 17.2 is released. If you found anything else, Else that I haven't mentioned, please let us know in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.